It is time for a commentary on the Ernie story. I have never seen a worse decision handled so badly, so ineptly, so insensitively. I have never seen such and heard such white-hot anger from so many people. Lawyers, ex-cons, hookers and nuns, sports writers and crap-shooting all-nighters. This town, and not just this town, this state and its people are saying not WJR, not King Tom Monahan, not even the legendary Bo can treat Ernie Harwell the way they treated him. How many millions of us over the years driving down from up north popped on the car radio and dialed around for Ernie's voice? How many millions of us driving back from Cleveland, Chicago, Cincinnati did the same thing, dialed around till we heard Ernie? It meant you were home, you were connected, you were inside the ballpark. Mr. Monahan, people are asking who your public relations director is. Attila the Hun, Bo, nobody, and I mean nobody, even at MSU or Ohio State, and certainly not Ann Arbor, would think for a New York second to treat you the way that Ernie Harwell was treated. That was about as American as European rugby, but it sure as hell wasn't baseball. If it was, we had all start better looking for a new national pastime. You can change it, and you men should. If you don't, every time somebody dials around waiting for Ernie's voice to tell them that they're home, well, the mad and the anger will start all over again. Ernie Harwell and millions of Tiger fans deserve a whole lot better. I mean, we ain't talking about some kid delivering cold pizza late, and we ain't talking about some college football game that we're losing. Bo, Tom, change your game plan. Good evening, everybody. If there is any good from all the anger and the pain caused by Ernie Harwell being dumped, it is that Ernie now knows just how much he is truly loved from fans all across Michigan and across uh, the Midwest. We got calls from Chicago today. Channel 7's Guy Gordon talked with Ernie today. Guy has more from the Channel 7 newsroom. Guy? Bill, it really has been overwhelming, and I think Ernie is overwhelmed by all of this affection that has been uh, coming forth. His phone's been ringing off the hook. He says, in fact, that he's a little bit embarrassed by all this attention. He says, heck, I'm only a broadcaster. Well, that attention started for him this morning, before the sun rose. How you doing? I appreciated your support yesterday. The phone started ringing at 5.30 this morning. Talk shows, fans, colleagues from across the country. It was just an outpouring of love and affection for a wounded friend. I heard from quite a few fans. I had a call from a guy in Atlanta, one down in uh, Dallas, Texas. And there are Tiger fans everywhere. They're great. The nicest call I got was from Bill White, uh, just uh, the president of the National League. He called me, and it was just so gratifying to know that he was thinking about me. But no calls from Bo or the Tigers. Lulu Harwell says if Bo did call, she'd ask the question everyone is asking. The fans love him so much and appreciate him so much, and, and some other people seem to kind of take him for granted, you know. Ernie is already in demand elsewhere. Offers began coming in last night. I was surprised that it happened this quickly. Can you tell me how many? Well, so far I could say five uh, firm offers, and uh, I really haven't done anything about it and don't expect to. Continued work may be a necessity. After 31 years with the Tigers and WJR, he only got a small pension from the team. He collected that at 65. Nothing from WJR. He operated as an independent. Benefits were not part of that deal. I think I could retire. I couldn't, I couldn't live in the style that I'm living now, but we, every, I think every retiree faces that when, when he comes up to it. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, no rarity in that regard. Okay, but continuing to work uh, might be something that you have to consider seriously. Yeah, I think so. Right. He really um, takes it very kindly and gently, he, as he does everything. But uh, <clears throat> I'm a little more emotional, and I'm angry. While gratified with the overwhelming show of support, he's concerned over possible backlash against the team and the station. My feeling is that as you go through life, you have to be exactly what you are. And if you try to be anybody else, it won't work because God makes everybody different. And I think uh, that's one of the, the beautiful things about our world. 
He says he just wants to do a good job in 1991. He doesn't want the team hurt. He doesn't want his station hurt. Lula and Ernie have been married now for 49 and a half years. She admits that uh, she's been a, a defender, a protector of him all those years. Uh, that this has hurt their children, their grandchildren. She said she got a call today from seven-year-old Elizabeth, one of their grandchildren, who says that she and little Annie, her little sister, were singing a song in the house today. And I can't sing it for you, but I can tell you the words. It goes something like this. Bo don't know, and neither does Domino. Bill, can you imagine what opening day is going to be like when that man steps onto the field? We will all be deafened, and I don't know what's going to happen it when Bo Schembechler steps on the field. It may be the last biggest crowd they'll have this year. It could be. Yeah. It will My be My son to see, called, though. and he said, what's new, Dad? And I said, uh, they fired Ernie Harwell. He said, they what? He said, you can't fire Ernie Harwell. Well, he used to drive back from Washington to Chicago. First thing he did in his Jeep was to tune around for the booster station. So he said, I could hear Ernie's voice, and I connected, and I was back home. I was in the ballpark. So. You bet. And, you know, he grew up with him, like we all did. I nice told him kid. he kept me behind, awake behind the wheel for a lot of years. Yeah. One guy said today, the great thing about listening to Ernie on the radio was that you could watch the game. Yeah. And yeah. taste the peanuts and smell the, the hot popcorn. dogs. Okay, thanks, Guy. More and more people have been waiting to show just how angry, upset they are about the firing of Ernie Harwell, Bob Talbert of the Free Press, Denny McLean, a couple of outspoken men from WXYT Radio are planning their own protest, and I'm going to be talking to those two gentlemen and their plans on the Upfront segment in just a couple of minutes, but Robbie has more.